Greetings, flesh creatures. It is I, Megatron. On behalf of TFYLP, I want to congratulate you for listening to the most refined collector podcast on this miserable little planet Earth. Yes. Here you'll find knowledgeable fans discussing every aspect of Transformers and beyond. Now, enjoy the show while I continue my path to complete conquest of all of you miserable biological entities. Predacons! Terrorize! Okay. Welcome back to Cut the Tape. I'm Rick Alvarez. Thanks for watching. So, today, I thought we'd do some rescue bot stuff. And there's a reason why I want to do rescue bot stuff. Now, anyone who knows me knows two things about me. One, I shave with a Bowie knife. And two, I'm not a big fan of rescue bots. But, I do collect them. I'm not a fan of Kiff's flares, but I collect them. So, I wanted to talk about some of the Rescue Bots packaging today, and what inspired it was this. So, this is the brand new Transformers Rescue Bots Academy Wedge. That's his name, right? Yeah, Wedge. So, something just shocked me about this when I got it, and it was the twist ties. What do you notice about these twist ties? It's an open packaging, there's no bubble, so you can touch the toy freely, which helps uh, with kids, uh, younger children. If they have tactile contact, they'll want it more. Let's see, what do you notice about these twist ties? It's hard to see in the video, but these twist ties are white, or rather gray. These ones color match the figure. This one's, it's like a reddish orange. This one's a black. This is the same color that Hotshot has. And it really works well for him, for the Rescue Bots Hotshot. And it's like that little tiny detail, just like, I don't know if that's love or pride. I don't know if that's just a simple marketing thing, but whatever caused them to say we need color-coded twist eyes to blend into the color of the body, to hold it securely into the package. That's, that's a win. That, as simple as that is, is the first time I've seen that and it makes it revolutionary. Take Rescue Bots for what it is, it's for a much younger audience, even, you know, so I would say my kids even aged out of it. What's your face is eight and the other one is five? So they're all about Cyberverse. I can't even get them into Beast Wars or G1. So, I'm not opening this one, because I only have the one. But, I wanted to talk about open packaging today. And original Rescue Bots versus Cyberverse. And then, we can talk about this type of packaging, which is, this is the uh, Flip Racers from Rescue Bots. And then end the day with this, all right? Now this this one, I'll admit there, there's actually no tape on this one, but it's, it's everything's still sealed. It's not my fault there's no tape on it. All right, so uh, anyone who was looking for Alpha Trine, they're five bucks at TJ Maxx, Home Goods, stores like that. With these guys, you know, I'm not a big fan of them, but it's Alpha Tron, five bucks. Hey, do it to it. All right, so this is the this is the traditional Rescue Bot. Let's call it deluxe figure, Re just regular Rescue Bot figure. They all come in a packaging card about this size. All right, no bubble, so there's a tactile contact with the kids. Let's cut the tape on this and see how hard it is to take it out now automatically look i'm looking at this this is glued in right so this is meant for a kid to just get in there and rip it out so let's open it the way a kid would open it now some of us when we were like six 
five, maybe not five, but you know, six, seven. We were getting at the point where we were being a lot more careful opening our toys because maybe we wanted to save the R or the tech specs. So at this point, as a kid, I'd be doing this, and it's in there pretty good. This is this is the uh, recyclable material twist tie. It's in there pretty good. I probably wouldn't have the dexterity as a say five year old to get this, so I'd be like, "Mommy, Daddy, Grandpa." Cut that and recycle. So here we go. Oh, oh. Uh, all right. So, I mean, you know, I have a million of these waiting to open. Uh, actually, I have a whole bunch that are open because I just bought a huge collection of them, but I haven't really played with them yet. This this has like no articulation. Like he can't even move his arms up or down. I mean, he's got five millimeter ports, so he can hold a figure or like a weaponizer or anything, but you know, he can't move his arms up. Uh, but that is kind of cool. Now, while that's cool, the fact that he can't, that he's got less articulation than a jump starter kind of drives me crazy. Two modes, Robot the Stegosaurus. I don't know if these were ever in the show or not. I've only seen a few episodes of the show. But it's interesting to see, like, show staple characters. Tier, I would say this is a tier A character for Rescue Bots. Who is this, Chase? Yeah. To see them as a dinosaur. I think that's really cool. Now it has a self-transforming, I would call this uh, almost automorph technology. This seems reminiscent of basic Beast Wars figures, which had the spring-loaded transformation action. Only this has zero articulation. I mean, this, I would say for the age this is targeted to that, this would have been a home run if the arms could move. But it's a dinosaur and it's cool. Uh, yeah. If there was like a Generations version of this, I'd, I'd be all over it. All right, so that's item number first. Here's another chase. This is the flip racer. Uh, let's see exactly what the... All right, so you flip it up, it transforms. This is a cool little packaging. Again, you have the tactile contact. You have the see-through, right? Because the reason there's a cut in the card, because when you flip him up, he's like a gravity bot. You, f you put it down, it transforms. You flip him up, he transforms. The arm sticks out the back, right? Now, they could have probably done this without having the back cut out, but I think it adds, it adds that little marketing umph to it. And this has two of the ties in there. So if I was a little kid, I'd do that, right? Pretty good anti-theft device, even though it's in an open package, I still can't get it out. I don't have my clippers with me today. I'm getting work done in the basement again, so everything's a mess until new systems go in. All right, so it's a gravity bot. That's all it is. It's it's a gravity bot. Do I have any here? Yes. Ha ha. A little dusty, but it's a gravity bot. You lay it down, it transforms. You stand it up, it transforms into robot mode. Gravity bots. So this this is perfect for a little kid. I would even say, you know what? This does a, this does a good job of explaining what the feature is. But in all reality, having just like a little tag that was like on the car, like you know they sell little plushes sometimes and they have just like a little tag, or like vinyl figures have a little tag. That little tag and just like a baseball sized card could have accomplished the same thing as this whole packaging. Just an observation, not not trying to criticize or say that anyone's done anything wrong with this. I'm just, just an observation. You know, more environmentally friendly. So here's another chase. All right, we got two chases we opened. Now this is, I would say, for a bit older kid. So this is from the Bumblebee, Cyberverse, Power of the, of the Spark, uh, 
Battle for Cybertron, whatever title it is. It goes through a title change every week. This is Alpha Trion. Laser Beam Blast Alpha Trion. So, it's a, it seems like a pretty hefty figure. So, I would say this is for kids age 6 and up. This one is for kids age 3 to 7. And this is for kids age 3 to 7. So, this is 3 to 7. This is 3 to 7. This is 6 plus. So, technically, these could cross over in a kid's collection. So open packaging, there are no twist ties that I see. There are just the um, plastic. The plastic bands holding it together into the packaging. And since it's Alphatron, we'll show a little more respect rather than ripping him out of the package. We're just going to pop them out. So instructions are in the bottom. These other two didn't come with instructions. Instructions were on the back. This just says changes in seven steps. So that's already interesting. Seven steps to transform him for kids six and up. So let's see. There's, I mean, it feels like there's a lot of spring-loaded features here. Yeah. Plastic feels a little rough. Uh, I would say they're almost the same consistency, but this feels a little, I don't want to say flimsy, that's not the right word, a little lighter than this, even though this is at a higher price point. Again, just an observation, that's all. All right, so there he is in vehicle mode. You know what this vehicle is? I'll tell you exactly what this vehicle is. This is Wheeljack Ship from Transformers Prime. That's what this is. That's what it is. So if we... Oh! I love spring-loaded shit. I love it. Sorry, I cursed. I love spring-loaded stuff. So if we put these down, it spring loads automatically. If it's up here, press the button, boom. If it's down here, boom. Laser beam blast. So it's a little weird to me that it has the laser beam blast effect molded into the plastic. This would make, oh, Look at that vehicle mode. You know who else, you know who they could have remolded this into? Vector Prime. Look at that vehicle mode. That's Vector. Look at the wings. All they would have had to do is change, maybe just change the head. I would take a straight up repaint of this as Vector Prime. Crap, now I want a Vector Prime. But it's cool to see an Alpha Trion. I have an extra Alpha Trion staff from, I think it's Dr. Wu? Somewhere. I just thought about it. He's got the five millimeter ports. Yeah, he needs a staff. He needs a little staff. That's cool. You know, it's one of those weird things. You never think you'd see an Alpha Trion, especially in like a younger audience oriented toy line so i mean that, that's a pretty good alpha trion you know say what you will about the articulation at least it has some this this could fit on a generation self it it could i mean you know you're gonna tell the aesthetic is different but it could fit all right, 
So, this is the big toy. I've got another one up there on the shelf. This one just kind of popped open and it won't stay shut, so this is why I'm opening this one. Uh, these were on, I think these were like 50 bucks. And I got this on clearance. So it's kind of like an Ultra Magnus transporter. You know, you put the other rescue bots in there. Uh, it comes with two of the flip racers. It comes with Bumblebee and uh, I want to say that's Blur. And you can put your other flip racers inside the trailer. So let's just open this back up, see what see what's inside. Again, there was no tape to keep it sealed, so it looks like there might be a launching feature. Is there? There is. Ah, it opens up. It opens up, and there's a launching feature. You know what? It even sh shows that on the art, on the front. I'm looking at other things other than like the art and the messaging on this. I'm I'm looking at, at different things. Random piece of cardboard. Okay. We've got some ramps. Looks like the trailer needs to be assembled. We've got the back end of the trailer. Are there instructions? All right, now here's something, look. You got these pieces of cardboard, right? That, that exist inside the packaging, right? And it's not, it's, this is a, hey, what would I do? This is just what would Rick would do. I would take these and I'd find a budget to take these corrugated pieces of cardboard and make them into like streets or ramps, something that I could place adjacent to the place uh, to make it even bigger. Think about the old Warren play base from G1. It was, uh, you open the box, you took out the pieces, it was cardboard, you assembled it, and even the box became like the second floor of the base made by Warren. I would do stuff like that with these like inserts to hold everything in place so it doesn't shift around. I would absolutely paint those up. All right. So we have the recyclable material twist ties that are holding Optimus in place. And there he is. There is Optimus Prime. Now I don't often take the time to transform a lot of stuff on the show, even though I just transformed three things. But let's just transform Optimus real quick. You know, I, I might have even repackaged this by itself and sold it for a cheaper price as, as like an exclusive somewhere. Maybe put some panels back here and just call it a day and say, hey, exclusive Optimus Prime, Automorph technology. And uh, let's see. So, he can bang his head. Yeah! Yeah, metal! That's not bad. It, there's, I mean, it has no articulation. It doesn't even have like a five millimeter port for me to put something in his hand, right? And these are way too big for five millimeter, but it's a big Optimus and he's your core character, him and, and B, right? So it's always gonna sell. It's always, always gonna sell. There's always gonna be a market. It's like Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker, R2-D2. There's always gonna be a market. Snake Eyes. For G.I. Joe, right? Matt Tracker for Mask. If Mask was like a thing. I wish Mask was a thing. Uh, alright. Bumblebee has come loose. And, uh, I don't know the rescue bots too well. I apologize. This is, I believe this is Blur. Yeah, this is Blur. He's a race car. Over three feet long. This is the same flip charger or flip racer as this. And this is the time where like 
I should have had a bigger desk to do this on. Because now I feel bad that if I don't show you how the trailer works. All right, so let's see. I mean, this is built for a child, right? So how hard could it be? I could, I could probably assemble this without... How, how hard could it be? So instantly, what I notice on the packaging, the colors are different. We got red base with uh, red axle with wheels on the packaging. It's blue. Simple observation. Wonder why that would have been changed. Again, it's not a complaint. Just an observation. Uh, looks like we got some sticker sheets. Always a plus. Big sticker sheets. And we got some Ultra Magnus trailer action going here. But hey, how hard could this be, right? This is built for kids. So that I want to say it goes like that. And I'm gonna guess these go here. Yeah. And you know what's crazy? There's enough room inside the box for this to come assembled. And actually, it might even it might have sold better if it had come assembled. And this was a tech. Uh, tactile feature as well so this the trailer opens up you can put your racers here right you got your launcher right here boom all right so that goes down and then there's a button somewhere to oh look at that hmm. oh it's this oh look at that bam you put them in there so they're standing up all right let's do this the right way come here b standing up all right. Yay. So that's how that works. This, I'm going to assume, goes up top. And you know, if eHobby did rescue bots, there absolutely would be a white version of this for Ultra Magnus. Oh, oh, you know what this should have been redecoed as? The G2 Mini Spy Launcher. You remember that? It never came out. That's what this could have been decoed as. And I, oh man, I totally would have done this in those colors. And I would have decoed the Bumblebee and the Blur to look like the car that came with it. I absolutely would have done that. That image of that unreleased uh, toy is out there. Go find it. Tuck, you can even redeco this into like Action Master Optimus Prime trailer. Basically any trailer. That's what we got. It'll work as any trailer. There we go. We got our big ass trailer. This kind of looks like a Peppa Pig bus. I know a lot about Pe Pe Peppa Pig because I have a five-year-old daughter, and she loves Peppa Pig. She like a tomato. There it is. Boom! Oh man, this absolutely should have been, should have been the G2 uh, race patrol launching vehicle set of Doom. And then you smack the stickers on it. Pow! Ah! Oh. You know what? I'm happy I did rescue bots today. I, should we do some Bumblebee stuff? No, no, let's not ruin it. All right, let's not ruin it. Okay, cool.
cool. Cut the tape. We've we actually I don't think we cut any tape. We've actually cut twist ties and ripped some things apart. But hey, you know. Okay. All right. Hey, thank you so much. Hasbro, if you're listening and you still want to go back in time and do some flip racers, let's do a little huffer so that we can connect it. Like that one scene in that one episode. Okay. All right. Thank you. Remember to be nice to each other. Remember to register to vote. Thank you. And we'll see you next time.